Welcome to the Dusty Jobs Podcast from Imperial Systems. Industry knowledge to make your job easier and safer. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Dusty Jobs Podcast. Uh, we're still here at Fabtech, and we're uh, joining us today is uh, Josh Pauly with uh, Vectis Automation. Yes, sir. And uh, they're one of our neighbors here at uh, Fabtech, so they're in the booth next door, and they were kind enough to lend us one of their cobots in our booth. It has been just really cool to see it all week, just uh, over there moving around and, and working underneath our airport hood. But we want to learn more about you guys. And uh, Josh, uh, you're one of the founders, is that right, of the company? Yes, sir. Yep. So so how did you get into this world? This is, I mean, cobots, robots, It's it's everything's coming down the line. Yeah. How did you get into the robotics industry to start out? Yeah, so my career uh, actually started in robotic welding uh, 12 years ago. Um, I was a mechanical engineering student at Colorado State University. Sophomore, walked into a career fair and found this company, Wolf Robotics, talked to them, um, was able to land an internship there, and that's kind of where it all started. So that was in 2011. Um, Did uh, assembly, kind of building the systems first, then applications engineering, project management, was a regional sales manager helping customers solve their problems uh, at that company, Uh, and then... Um, in 2019, um, some of my uh, colleagues and I, we, we got together and uh, founded Vectus. So, nice. And the whole idea behind Vectus is making automation easier to use, more accessible for a broader range of manufacturers, right? Okay. Um, traditional automation solutions have a lot of hurdles to them, right? You know, there's cost, footprint, flexibility, programming time, training time, fixturing time and costs. So our whole goal is... How can you democratize that, right? How can you make it much easier to, to bring automation to folks where it wasn't quite accessible before? Well, yeah, I know we're, we're seeing that a lot here at the show in general is that, um, you know, uh, one, one of the jokes is that uh, robots don't get sick. They don't call off. Yeah. They, they tend to keep working. But but you guys aren't a robot. You guys are a cobot, right? Yeah. So maybe there's some people out there that, that don't know what Certainly. that is. So, t- so yeah, yeah. can you break down what the difference between yeah. a cobot and a robot is? Absolutely. So a cobot is a robot. It's just a squishing together of collaborative and robot, right? Okay. And it's collaborative in the sense they're they are six axis arm, just like robots have been for decades. Gotcha. Um, there are six axis arm, but it's unique in the fact that humans can work alongside it. And that's empowered by the fact that there's force, torque, uh, and power sensing on every axis, so okay. if, it, if it runs into you, it'll stop before it hurts you, right? Um, and so now you can do away with the caging, you can do away with the light curtains, the door interlocks, all that stuff, right? That makes traditional automation a bit more monumental, right? Um, yeah. And now it's becoming more, we even call them tools, right? The whole idea is how can they be easy to use, flexible tools for the welder fabricator, right? Well, and I can say from sitting here and watching your guys' uh, piece of equipment all week, in comparison to um, some of the other robots at the show that yours seems to have a real, it's a real smooth motion. It, it moves yeah. real, real uh, carefully and smooth. Approachably where, is what we like to say. Yeah, there yeah, you it's, go. That's a great It's approachable, word. right? In the fab shop, you're not scared of it, right? right. You know, when you look at traditional robots that are very heavy, move very fast, they were born for automotive. They were born for doing millions of parts and cars. Yeah, a year, and that's right? it. You see those, and they're they're like so. So a third of a second of a cycle time matters. So you're moving quick, you're moving fast. The whole thing's cordoned off because an automotive's a line, right? So right. yeah, absolutely. There's no operators involved, right? right. Whereas you know, on the flip side, we're trying to fill that gap for customers doing 20 parts, 50 parts, 500 parts, right? Okay. Where I want a more approachable tool versus a high production line robot, right? Yeah. So if I'm if I'm sitting here, what would be, uh, tell me some uh, fields, some jobs that your unit is just ideal for. Like, what would yeah. that be? What, yeah. I mean, because it's not, like we're talking, it's not automation. It's not slamming out 100 parts in 20 minutes or whatever. It's it's for what? What would be ideal yeah. for you guys? It's a great question. And it's, it's a tough one to answer because we find more and more applications every day. And the answer is it's a very broad range, right? Um, You know, we've got anything from job shops doing batches of 20s, 50s, 500, 5,000, right? Yeah. Um, Those medium volume quantities, right? Um, To OEM manufacturers making construction equipment, making mining equipment, making agricultural equipment, making widgets, right? We just spoke to someone that's making uh, garden tools, right? 
Those have to get welded, right? Yeah. We spoke to someone making drinking fountains. Those have to get welded. There's so many things, as y'all know, welded in everyday life that um, if there's some level of repetitiveness to them, the whole idea is how can we offload the boring arc on time to the cobot, leaving the skilled human welders to really focus on the welds that require skill, right? Uh, right. And that are tougher for any type of automation to yeah. do. And probably also... Uh, helping to eliminate some of the, the health risks that come along with some of this type of welding. You know, some uh, some welding is, is not as bad as others, and I'm sure having a cobot in that space to handle something that we don't want in our own breathing zone is, yeah. is ideal. So, well, and especially when you pair it with, like, the airport, right? Because right. now you've got the ability to, one, get the, get the human operator, human welder, farther away from the fume exposure, right? Then we, we've got the ability to capture that as well, right? right? So you're absolutely creating a healthier, safer shop. You know, fewer black boogers coming out of the yeah. nose at the end of the day, right? <laughs> Which benefits everybody, right? Right. right. Um, and we, you know, we talk a lot about the skilled labor shortage, the skilled welder shortage. Well, it's not. I don't know if it's a job I would pick right away, right? Because right. it is dirty, right? Yeah. So what can we do together to create a safer, healthier work environment as well, right? right. Let's get those fumes out of there. Let's get the operator farther away from the fumes. Let's get the operator using a tool to accomplish those boring tasks. Now, you keep calling it a tool. And, and to me, personally, if someone put that in front of me and said, you need to run this, it seems a little intimidating to me. But, I mean, that's what you guys do. You build the software. I mean, how how hard is it to for, for a guy like me yeah. who doesn't have a lot of experience or maybe someone out there who's thinking about this, how hard is it to really learn how to use one of these things? Most customers are welding within the first day. Right? Really? And even and particularly the ones that have no prior experience with robotics or automation or whatnot. That's really what we've done with the product is lower that technological threshold to be able to start using it, right? I, I kind of make the comparison to, you know, let's say you've got, you got to put nails in studs, right? Or, or build a roof, right? You've got two tools at your disposal. You got a hammer and you got a root and a nailer, right? right. Both are valuable, right? Let's let's now make that analogy a you know manual welder and a cobot tool, right? Gotcha. There are going to be nails that make sense to be driven with the hammer, right? Yeah. Um, but for one, you know, when you're doing the sheeting on the top of the roof, why not grab the nailer, right? Right. There's a lit, you know, to a to a nailer, it's a little intimidating. But, yeah. Hey, with some quick instruction, you can get it going pretty quick, right? So that's the whole idea is the boring, monotonous, repetitive tasks, what can you offload to those cobots? But I don't have to be a computer programmer to run Correct. this thing, right? Correct. So Yeah, so most of our customers, um, it's a welder, a fabricator, a grinder that, that's programming the, the cobot, right? That's That was the, exactly the intent that we made the system for, was for um, folks that are not programmers, not CNC um, operators, not engineers, to yeah. be able to pick it up and use it very quickly. And, from what from talking to you before, that's really what you guys your specialty is just your software that allows that to be easy. Yeah, it's the uh, software friendly. definitely. It's the integration options to accomplish a wide range of uh, applications, and then it's the application expertise. You know, it's we've got over two hundred. We've been doing this together for over two hundred years combined experience. Oh right? wow! So being able to help, especially new customers, navigate how do I be successful with automation? Right. That's yeah. that's the other thing that we really help bring to the table. Yeah. So. so I don't I don't have to be an expert in automation because you guys will be the experts. Yeah. And we're, just we're let me help know. Guide you. And our, yeah. our whole mantra is we want to teach our customers how to fish, not give them a fish, right? Yeah. Because if you taught how to fish, you can eat for a lifetime, right? right? So and I think it's really cool to see as well with, you know, again, the skilled labor shortage. Technology like this, especially when it's in a cleaner environment with an airport or, or another imperial system product, yeah. Um, we're bringing more folks into industry. Because it's made, it's being made to be more interesting. I get to use technology. I get to work in a cleaner, yeah. healthier environment, right? Yeah, so we, I think I think it's one of the ways that we can want solve the crisis by increasing productivity, but also by bringing more folks into the workforce. Yeah, uh, and we found that too. It's uh, a lot of people uh, used to just uh, assume that if you were going to be a welder, you were going to be down down in the dirt in the muck. And yeah, and um, as things change and people progress. Shops are getting cleaner and cleaner yeah. and cleaner, and and things like using cobots and having clean air is, I think that's just where it's going. Yeah, I believe so too. I, we I'm see customers using it as a recruiting tool, like, hey, come work for us because our shop is cleaner. Yeah, and we have cool technology that you can use. Yeah, you know, <laughs> like it's a powerful tool to the I next generation. I don't think generation. it's going away. Yeah, so I agree. I think it's important for those shops that are out there that are weld shops to to figure out who they 
not just want to buy something from, but who they want to partner with in this in this yeah. side. And, and that sounds like what you guys are all about. It's not just selling someone a piece of equipment, but partnering with them. Absolutely. And, and finding the right solution for them. Absolutely. We only win when our customers win, right? We're privately held. We're not beholden to anybody but our customers and our team members, right? Yeah. So um, it's even one of the reasons why we're able to offer our 30-day money-back guarantee, which is nuts um, in capital equipment, right? Um, but it's because we're doing our due diligence to make sure we're doing right by our customers the whole way through, right? God, that's that's phenomenal. Yeah. So where are you guys based out of? We're in uh, Colorado, Loveland, about an hour north of Denver. Okay. And if anybody out there is interested in... in seeing more about your equipment or getting more information, how would they do that? Heck yeah. Um, great way is on our website, www.vectisautomation.com, V-E-C-T-I-S. Gotcha. Um, we're also really active on LinkedIn. There's a lot of good content. A lot You can see a lot of customer implementations, get some ideas flowing. So LinkedIn, uh, you can search for Vectis Automation there. And our YouTube channel as well, Vectis Automation YouTube channel. Just see, get some ideas flowing on how it might be re- um, relevant in... Um, uh, and uh, your shop. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, and you guys sound, you're just like us, American made, American owned company, right? Amen. Yep. There you go. Yep. So Doing right by customers. Yep. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> I love well, it. Jo- I know it's a busy show and we all have things going on and I really appreciate you stopping hey, thank by and giving you. us a minute. Yeah. So, it's been great but, to partner in your booth and I love this demo and yeah. being able to show how, I love the fog machine, right? It shows yeah. exactly how that system's going to help uh, uh, keep a shop cleaner. So we yeah. appreciate the partnership. Well, it's great. So, same with us. If you guys are interested in uh, learning more about Imperial, you can find us on YouTube, our website, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, uh, most social media platforms yeah. we're on there. But uh, thanks for listening. And uh, until next time, stay healthy and stay safe. Thanks for listening to the Dusty Jobs Podcast. Breathe better, work safer.